the thing and spray it on. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to call the Park and Rec Commission meeting of September 17th to order. We do have a quorum. Uh, first on the agenda is approval of the August 20th, 2020 minutes. Motion yeah. We got a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion carries. Uh, unfinished business. We have an update on the park projects in progress. You might want to move. Yeah, I figured that. Right you don't want me in front of the. Keep <laughs> 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 your eyeballs. Going that way. Yeah. Ta da. So we'll go right down the list. This is all the stuff that's kind of ongoing. Um, actually, I talked to Tim Malzahn from the Ice Age Trail today, and he's got a group of um, student, uh, students from uh, oh, what school was it? Um, engineering students. MSOE? No, it's on the <laughs> west, west, I can't remember. Over Plantfield? Yeah, Plantfield, yes. That's working with him, trying to do a design for the, um, the parking lot. Um, so they're working on getting permits and stuff together um, and doing some survey work because they need a floodplain permit and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. So that's ongoing. Um, I think right now what they're trying to do is get it going so they can put that trail in and put the board, the bridge over the river, and then the parking lot will wait. So, next project, All Abilities Playground. So I sent the contracts out well, Tuesday after the council meeting. The plan is to have the playground somewhere in the, oh, that my thing doesn't work on here. Somewhere in the flat, Mike, you can maybe come to it. <laughs> yeah. um, so play by design got to work the contract. Somewhere, Somewhere in that field. flat, you can see the contours aren't so close together <clears> there. Um, so we need to get a survey done of this area because we're probably going to end up doing some kind of parking, like for bus parking and stuff as you come in. Um, and we need to get survey for the for like the entrance to the bathroom to make sure all that's accessible. They're going to be focusing on just the inside of the playground, wherever that ends up being. Um, so we need to get a survey of that before they get started. Or right are after you going to have access to that northern thing up there? That might be a good spot. The north. We're talking about this north? North part. Yeah, north oh, back. Um, that's probably, look at the contours there. You no, you'll really just go up a little bit. And that's, yeah, I mean, you're going to have to move dirt. Jim's looking at a, a drive to access. Or like for a oh, drop off or something like that. Um, probably that? not. We're probably thinking up by the bathrooms. You could show them, Mike. Is you right now? You come <laughs> in on the left side and go yes. out on the right. We'd probably come in on the right, and then come through the parkway or park parking lot to the left to get out. Mm -hmm. Change that traffic pattern. So then there's a kind of a flat spot as you come right. into the drive towards the bathroom on the right there, that's where probably a good spot for a bus drop off would be. And part of it too is, where is the playground going to be laid out? Yeah. Because a lot of the other playgrounds that we went to visit, some of the things we hear, some of the people actually want the restrooms inside the fence in the area. So most of them don't, like Franklin does not, Port Washington does not, things like that. But at the same time, if your playground's here and your restroom's there, we got to make sure that people can get back and forth safely. It's close. Little kids don't yeah. have a lot. <laughs> so, I mean, we wouldn't put a drive lane in here or anything like that. Because no. just, it just wouldn't be smart. You know, it wouldn't be practical. Things like that. So. Uh, like my concern I would have is if we've got an activity going on, a uh, reunion, uh, would have a graduation party, any type of thing, if you put it too close, to the south here, mm -hmm. are you going to impede the people that have already paid the money to utilize the facilities there and everything? And also, are going to rely on that thing if you've got to make it too difficult for them to access you. The bathrooms and stuff? Yeah, and that. yeah we wouldn't block anything. Um, I'm thinking. I'm, what I'm also thinking is the access. You see where it comes down into the parking lot? Would, would you have the bus access to the north of there? So, my thoughts are, you can see the contours are pretty far apart right yep. here. Yep. Right now, the traffic pattern comes in this right. comes in this way and goes around. Right. We probably do it this way. This would probably be a good spot. It'd just be a drop-off. It's not like you're going to park a bus there. 
just so that you can be accessible. Um, you can have access to the bathroom the, for ADA requirements, mm -hmm. and then wherever the pathway into the, the playground would be would be accessible too. So so you, it's pretty. It's more. So then you would be like paving an area with a drop-off paved area. Yes. So somebody could go to the left of the bus. Mm -hmm. Yes. So yeah. They, they could pull off here and park and drop off whoever, and then pull out of there and park in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they wouldn't be sitting there. Yeah, um, I, think, I think we have to be cognizant of yep. other uses that are yep, going existing on. Existing facilities. Said, you know, and because For the, sure. I think Karen could probably tell us. But it, my recollection is that this is a significant revenue mm -hmm. for us. Yeah. And we don't want to impede that or anything. Sure. Yep. But design work will include all that, their suggestions and stuff, yes. right? Yeah. We'll be doing the design work outside of the playground. But that areas. all coincides with the playground. Yeah, we yeah. have to, we have to be accessible yep. when we open the playground. And are we going to maintain the existing playground? That's up to be. That's to be determined. Yeah. Okay. Or the, this is that the volleyball court. Yeah. This may go away. This may go away. It may all be incorporated into it. We don't know yet. We haven't I, gotten that far. The long hard look at that. I've been to some of the other ones where they. Have maintained existing playgrounds mm -hmm. primarily because the people that are utilizing all abilities obviously are for, it's for everybody. Right. But for the target people on that, you, you don't want my grandkids coming in there and taking up things and everything else type of thing. And so if you leave that access for them, sure. you know, the existing type of thing, mm -hmm. because we've got, as happens all the time, our neighborhood is doing a complete changeover again since we moved there 20 years ago. We now got. Twelve little rugrats running around, which is complete changeover, and they know they access this down now, and don't want to take that playground advantage and utilization away from them also because they're the ones that are there. That's why they, their parents pay their city taxes and they sure. utilize this. So I've been really reluctant to say, when all possible, to maintain existing playground equipment, and not necessarily the. Volleyball court, you don't see yeah. too much of that activity there. It's, yeah, and that, that playground is very popular, let me tell you. That's an old contour map. This is actually yeah. about three, four feet higher than this is. Right. Yeah, These are that. more contours here and here. Right. But, you know, we could incorporate, what I would think is if we're keeping it, we'd incorporate it into the All Abilities mm -hmm. Playground. That's like a five to 12 year old um, right. age range playground. Mm -hmm. So if, you know, if we can, there's if you can keep it, there's no point in getting rid of it. I think that should be one of the points that we yeah. should really look on. We were going to include you in the next invites mm -hmm. for meetings and design meetings and all that. Yeah. Well, you mentioned you wanted to get a little yeah. more involved with it. So. Did they, have they come up with a theme yet? Or no. is that still part of the discussion? No, but when, um, after we gave them the award for the project, I mentioned that we had one of the other firms thought of like Ice, Ice Age. Age. Yeah. The Ice Age trail's right there. I really like that idea. And most of the people on the group that were in, you know interviewing people really liked that too. So I did mention that to them that that was something we talked about whether it's the final, who knows, but there's a lot of cool things you could do with that. Yeah, thing. yeah, definitely a lot of pretty universal and yeah, yeah. yeah. to the area. Okay, I just didn't know cuz I know originally I thought they were doing something like they were thinking of like outer space or something, or it was just something they kicked around. Yeah. So I didn't know if that had been talked yeah. about more. One of the okay. main aspects of this is a theme for the entire playground. Yeah. So, um, like we like it was just mentioned, the one consultant had some really cool mm -hmm. woolly mammoth features and things like that. So when the kids are like walking into the playground, it could be maybe a giant woolly mammoth with the tusk coming out, things like that. Um, again, with Ice Age Trail, the glacier, you know. Features, things like that. So, but yeah. again, that's the group has to decide on. Okay, that. I didn't know if that was part of like, I, when they gave I, the contract. I like that idea. I yeah, I really like. It. And it is yep. a it is a city park, so we do have some yeah. input into the theme and all that kind of stuff too. It's not like they're just gonna run the show. We have input because it'll be our part to maintain and all of that. So. Um, you can almost get a yeti too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're gonna get, we could get you in a costume in the hillside. <laughs> Look, Bigfoot. Yeah, that's probably about right. Yeah, So the next step is try to get a, a survey done and get them, they'll be starting on talking to people about what the ideas are for putting in this and the theme and all that. So we have a whole 
Okay. And, the, and the, yeah. the final project comes before this commission yet also. Yep. So. So, okay. Uh, Riverside Park tennis and basketball courts are done. Those are all finished. Um, so, one more thing off the list. Totally resurfaced, new backboards, new hoops, all that stuff. Yep. So. We pulled up the fence between the two, so we got all that. Cracks, all was armor crack repair put on there. and. Um, so it's, it should be good to go for a long time now. Same program we did in Regner two years ago? Yep. Is there a plan for Barton to do this someday? I think Barton is a complete redo up there. We did look at putting uh, snap court on it, leave the existing asphalt. Same thing we did in Regner Park for the uh, basketball courts there. We could overlay the Barton courts with that, um, but that did not make the budget final budget numbers this year. So, Because even Decorah, we were looking at that also. Is that significantly more expensive? I can't, I could give you, I got numbers in my no, office, just, just but not. compared to a complete redo, no. So like the snap court overlay, so let's say the courts get too far, like the court is kind of getting to that point. If we would decide that, okay, we want to save them or continue with them, instead of completely redoing them, we look at a snap court option that we can just overlay over the existing. Mm -hmm. So. Square footer, cost-wise, Jim, I don't know off the top of my head. Yeah, to mill that and reconstruct an asphalt yeah, thing, you have, it's like a parking lot, and then yeah. you have the right. tennis court, too. Mm -hmm. This was $40,000 to do the basketball, just the like the, like the crack repair and all of the surface coating on there and the striping. So if you have to reconstruct that whole asphalt area, mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's considerably more. This gets a lot of use. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very much so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, they look great. So we had a pre-construction meeting for the library um, on the 16th, and they're going to be starting construction on the 21st. So that's the, just to refresh your memory, it's the li lobby on the upper left, the dance studio, the multi-purpose room, the hallway, that's gray, and then the two bathrooms. Oh, all here. And then and the men's and women's, and then there's a maintenance area right between the two. What does it say the brown things are? I can't read that. Dance studio oh. and multi purpose. Oh, okay. Nope. And these are existing mechanicals. And yeah. No. Lobby's kind of important for the families that you know, are waiting and all that, so we want to. <laughs> so the schedule, it looks like with the schedule, they'll be finished with most of the construction by the end of November. And then into December, they have to cut a chase through the roof of the basement, the floor, mm -hmm. the first floor, and then through the roof of the library to for it's ductwork for that HVAC. And that they're planning probably in December sometime. So hopefully it will be done by the end of the year and ready for occupancy beginning in January. Is that when the new classes start the first of the year around that time? Is that correct? Is Mutual Mall, we're going to have that until mid-November. Okay. And then that's going away, so Nick's got that planned and the schedule for a break in there. And then if this is done, we can we, we could slide right into this. Okay. It should. Things go as planned, it should work. And it's a big open area, so there's no there's not much surprises yeah. in there. It's You can see everything. Is the dance studio multi-purpose room the, the wall between removable at all? No, or is it, that's permanent. Yeah. It would be permanent. Because, yep. like, what about, like, you know, if classes start to get bigger or something? I mean, well, if even you want like a bigger the, dance studio. If the something. dance studio, if we need to use a multi-purpose room for some of that, we can. So you just do, like, two classes Yeah, we didn't something. want to name them both multi-purpose or, yeah. one, you know. They were building two dance rooms in a, you know, lower level. Um, so we just kind of name them as is. Okay, so. But if we had classes in one, and all of a sudden that registration's full, we can move some. So like the thought of like larger classes yep. in the future would just be split into two instead of <clears throat> just yep. the and ability to make it a bigger room or something. Um, we wouldn't be able to make it a bigger room. It just we could fill the, the next room basically. That's, okay. But even like the dance studio, <clears throat> the library's looking at using that for programs also, not dance programs, right, but just right. for general reading programs, or something. Right. Yep. So. Does yeah. the library have any designs on the future um, rooms or anything? Yeah, you can see those, the green walls are like surrounding future yeah, right. build-outs. Is, is nope. that for library usage or would it be? 
Um, I, well, I think there's a there's a plan to kind of for the library to also use the stuff that's getting built now. I know they bought a projector that's going to be mounted in the middle of the ceiling. I think the multi-purpose room, so it can be projecting onto. There's like a special paint you put on one of those walls. So you can project right on the wall. So they have plans to. I mean, you could use it for meetings or whatever you needed to for any of those. I mean, Mike, you working with the MOU with them. The general plan right now is the library would use these spaces, the, the new one, the ones we're doing now, and even phase two, pretty much during the daytime, and then our evening or afternoon and evening rec classes, when we would we would have that time slot. Um, between the two schedules, I think things are going to be pretty full, pretty busy, um, and then even when we do have an opening and things like that, um, I know day, um, Jackie's group we're looking at getting them in there for a time slot and. It's starting to fill up in a good way, you know. Mm -hmm. So even like Saturdays with the dance studio, we get closer to the dance recital. We have to run some Saturday practices and all that stuff, you know, that would be available for us. So um, the MOU might be coming before the commission next month. Um, Ian just um, updated it Tuesday of this week, Monday, Tuesday. Um, and that kind of lays it all out where um, Park and Rec get um, first choice at scheduling and then the library, uh, number two. But the general feeling right now is library during the day, us in the evening, that's all. Nope. Library people are all on board with this too? They are very excited about it. Amy and Brad are very excited about getting this done. They have some programs at night, and that room upstairs is too small, and so they'll, they'll be able to use this once in a while. And, uh, yeah, and even phase two, they're even almost more excited about getting phase two going for the library activities and programs. I don't like the conference room there and things like that. So, as they said too, some of the downtown businesses ask them at times if there's a conference room in the library that they could use during the daytime for, you know, an extra meeting and things like that. And they don't have that. They're they have the one conference room that's smaller than this one. So if they would have something in the basement, might be a little bit of revenue generation for them and all that. So because <clears throat> they can't. Invoice for some other programs, but I think facility rentals they probably could because the state statute and all that stuff. So, okay, next project <clears throat> Tree Surety 2021. Um, typically, we bid this out in the winter time and are awarded like February, March. But what's happened is that what's, what's always happened, and we've always been on the wrong side of this, is that the nurseries have stopped right now that they are selling for spring. So by the time we get around to bidding this out, the contractor's got to find, you know, 100 trees, and a lot of the stuff is gone already or sold in the nursery. So what we want to do is bid it out in the fall, and then it'll be, they can purchase the trees for spring, whoever gets awarded the project. So um, these are all of the stumping areas, and Mike can talk about what's been removed lately. And so we're trying to get, and we've been sending letters out to the residents who've had stumping done recently to kind of encourage them to get their applications in. We don't want this replacement tree thing to stretch out another 10 years. We'd rather have them um, apply now, especially because you're taking all the stumps out of one neighborhood. <coughs> Contractor gets the trees, he can plant the whole neighborhood instead of being all over the city every year. So um, we've been getting responses back from the letters we sent out. We're asking them to get their applications <coughs> by the end of September. The arborist will go out and make sure that can tell how many trees are going on each parcel and get that thing out to bid earlier than later. So you can talk about how many stumps are going on, Mike. Um, so for the most part, EAB removal, and we did the tree removals. Um, it started kind of center of the town, and then it was kind of south to north, and then to west, and back into Deer Ridge. Why? Because that's pretty much how the trees were dying and things like that as EAB worked through West Bend. So. All the ash stumps are gone in all these areas, but now we have non-ash stumps. Some of these stumps down here were there for three years. So again, gone in 19, spring of 2020, spring of 2020, and now our staff is working back through this whole part of the city. Um, again, all the ash stumps are gone in the southern part, but the non, because maple trees die or something else. So I talked to Dan today and he said they have about 50 trees left, park trees and street trees and there shouldn't be a stump left in the city. So that officially ends the Emerald Ashbourne infestation. <laughs> and 
we found EAB in, in downtown West Bend, June of 2010. So in 10 years, EAB has completely covered 9,000 acres of West Bend. And it's taken out over 3,300 ash street trees and thousands and thousands of woodlot trees. And I have no idea how many private trees are out there. But the DNR and some other groups throughout the state, they kind of use us as a good example. We were the first large municipality to get an infestation. So it's never good to be first when it comes to insect infestations, but but it's good. It's good. Other states have looked at it too, and things like that were our 9,000 acres. We had our street tree inventory. We could pull statistics. We could generate maps like this. And this is important too for staff and planning and scheduling for our staff, for contractors. So when we talk about street tree inventories and all that, they're important for when we have things like this. And, and like I said, not only for staff, but with Cindy laying everything out with contractors, and we know where the ash trees were and who's going to want to get replanted. So, so one of the other things we're doing again this year is applying for the Urban Forestry Grant. It's a twenty-five thousand dollar grant, and they do not want to fund existing ongoing programs like all street tree planting. So we have to come up with new things every year. Mike mentioned about. Um, the residents um, for their information and they have they have ash trees on their property that are dead that need to come out and they're taking them out so one a couple of the things that we're doing to get more points on this grant and it'll be actually things that the guys will be doing this winter is they have to update the forest management plan which hasn't been touched since 1995 um, there's an 18th street tree demonstration area we're going to take some of the duplicate trees out of that and put some new ones in that we're planting around the city so people can come and look at them and then we're going to we're going to put tags on them and get a, a key and set that out where the public can access it so they can get more information on the trees um, also we want to add some trees to the ridge run arboretum which are all trees that can be planted on private property are the Sorry, the trees that are going to be on the 18th, are there like plaques there that tell about them? Or like, Not yet. Or no. is, but I mean, could we do like a QR code on the yeah. plaque and then somebody could scan it and then that would be like well, open up the more information? I don't think as far as a QR code, but what we're going to do, right now what we have is everything's numbered and we have a map key on, on our city it's webpage. Old. And it's kind of old. Okay. It, it needs to be updated. Yeah. Yeah. But we want to physically do, if someone wants to look on that, you can print it off. We would have information on a website, but we want to put tags in on each one of the trees the as we go down. So at least you would know which, what you're looking yep. at. Okay. Yeah, you can stand right there and look at the tree and have the information. Yeah. We are incorporating QR codes out of Lac Lorando along the trails and things okay. like that. So What's a QR code? It's a little code. It's almost like a barcode. It's a little square black box. It's got a whole bunch of squiggly lines in it. Black squiggly lines. Yep. They got a yeah. smartphone in it. You can scan it, and then all the you information. Need a <laughs> yes, yes, uh, yes, yeah. yes, Jim. Track phones don't work. <laughs> but or it'll open up like you can open up a menu. It can open up a, can open up a whole PDF. Yeah. You can open up information about it. So, where do I get information if I don't have access? You can go on the website, and you can download a map. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing for the Ridge Run Arboretum. Put a map together that you can actually print out and look at. Yeah. Is that on the north, north end, northwest side? Okay. By the big, by Peanut yeah. Pond up there. Yeah. Right. Okay. So we'll put a map together and then information on those trees. And those trees, the ones on the 18th Street, are basically street tree examples. Mm -hmm. But the ones on the Arboretum are trees that not not necessarily mm -hmm. going to do well on the streets, but you could plant them in your yard. Okay. So there'll be information on that. They've also. It's, um, we're going to take the trees in Old Settlers Park and Vest Pocket Park, and they've started taking the trees on the River Walk. So we'll have information on all of those so people can walk around, look at them, and say, oh, I like that one, I want to put that in my yard. Um, and then put that was out on like the website or someplace they can get access to that information for, in, for education. So that gives us more points for the grant. Okay. So, um, and then, Mike, they're going to update their pruning um, schedule, and we've got so many new trees out in the city now, all these juvenile trees that need, like, training pruning, so they're going to do those more, prune them more often so they don't wait five, ten years by the time all these structural defects are there. You don't have, then you have big problems to deal with, but if you prune them more often, you can keep up with that stuff, especially the elms, they grow like crazy. So... Um, Next one, just quickie, is Lockleron Logging. The contract's out. Um, Tom Schoenbeck, that was his name. 
He's going to be um, doing the logging out that pine plantation. The plan is to start anywhere from mid-October or November, December, depending upon what the ground is like. It's squishy, frozen, raining a lot, whatever. So, if anybody's any questions about that. And that's part of the master plan for the property. Yeah. And those pines are they're due, they're overdue. They need to be harvested or certain some major dieback and things they're like diseased, that. So yeah. it is time to harvest them. So okay, next the money's for that goes into the lack of money. That is correct. Um Regner Beach House, this is getting revisited. Um, we met with Ron Hanchy, the architect from HGM. He's been working on this since 2014. Um, so what we've talked about in order to get this project off the ground is to um, maybe phase it. So the plan is, and we're going to be talking to him next week, but one of the things we thought of is to not do the areas that are circled in red right away. Um, you could do the construction of the front end and the regular rejuvenation, but really wanted to keep the look of the building and the front facade the same. So if we do the construction of the areas that are not circled in red as phase one and do phase two as the area is circled in red, you can just, all the utilities will be there. There's no plumbing in that red circled area. It would be relatively easy to put that on later. If I, then we have to talk to him. There may be some areas like where the kitchen is, if we have to construct that as storage right now, because you don't really need a kitchen for the multipurpose room if you're not gonna have a multipurpose room yet. And some of the bathrooms on the right hand wing, maybe those would be storage for now, but we'd set up all the plumbing and stuff so you could do those later. So we're gonna talk to him next week, find out what the plan for phasing could be. Um, and then, cause they really need to get those, that, those bathrooms fixed out there. So um, this would give us a way of doing yeah, that. Perfect. The next slide is, uh, Sorry. okay. <laughs> So um, also the phase, the first phase probably would be the parking lot. We redesigned this because the other parking lot was into really crummy soils. So we moved that out of the way and put um, the, the phasing would include the walkways from the other parking lot to the building so it would be accessible. So here's the existing building yep. right okay. here. Yep. The pond's here. Okay. Playgrounds here. Mm -hmm. Bathhouse parking lot's there. So right now this is the walkway. Right. Where am I? Yep, here's yep, a walkway that would down be the walkway we could start. to the existing building. Right. So the new parking lot would be. Immediately. What's over on the left side? Is that the camp lodge? No, nope, this is just, just, uh, just another overlay. Here's the oh, existing okay. building with. This is part of the plans. Oh, that, that, yep, so this is just existing building with the yeah. utilities and things like that. As you can see, we do have one or two things down there okay. all the gas and the electric and things. So we're going to get a better <laughs> idea um, of the costs of phasing it and try to get that going so that it can be done at some point in time instead of sitting there waiting forever and ever. Part of that will be right about where the old sled mill was. Huh? <laughs> that probably won't be done right away. Oh, that might yeah. be a later the phase. The sled mill is further to the south, isn't it? Yeah, the parking lot's on a oh, flat area. Oh, yeah. down here, Mike. Mm -hmm. Down here, yeah. Oh, but the one that had the slide years ago. Well, yeah. It might have moved. Yeah. Yeah. That's... Yeah. Before my dad, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the parking lot. Oh, yeah. so. uh, Thank you. Okay, <laughs> this is the Regner shelter. <laughs> Still getting work done. Um, met with the um, contractor and the guys who did the wood. Mm -hmm. They they produced the wood areas yesterday. Um, there's some issues with the brackets that hold that fascia on the outside up. So they're gonna re do those with different holes and then it, she'll come together and then after they get that figured out, she'll take about a week and a half to get the roof and stuff done, all the roof decking on, um, and then we can work on the rest of it. So it's just been that fascia on the outside is something new. They used to do just a two by fascia and now they've gone to this blue lamb fascia so it's pre-drilled and everything and the brackets were not, the holes in the brackets were not done right. So that's coming along. Um, and the last thing is the river walk. We still don't know about the stewardship grant, but some of the things that we've been talking about with the alley, on the upper right-hand side, you can see the plan for kind of redoing the alley. 
Um, the upper one is a, a view down into the alley, um, and the left side would be by the river, the right side would be by Main Street. So, and the, 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 the plan part on the bottom shows a cross section of that. You want to show them, Mike, the... So, right here is a cross section <laughs> of the alley. This is the existing walk right now. Because, and this is the riverside, because they elevated because it went to the cover bridge, it went across the river. Well, that's obviously all gone. <clears throat> One of the things that everyone wants is a connection from downtown to the river walk or vice versa. And with that connection, obviously, they want a nice, safe feeling about it, um, lighting, etc. Et and they want to physically see the river. So if I'm standing on Main Street, I can look through this alley and see the river. I know where I'm going. So here's the existing, and also in there, here you got the big fire escape. There's many, many different, you think it's an alley, it's an access point, no big deal, right? It is a big deal, just, just a lot to go with it. So right now it's designed with several steps to get down to that bottom elevation. And the, the plant, the, there's a lot of alleys downtown, so if you can't see the river, you're gonna assume that's a private alley. And the other way, if you can't see Main Street, you can't, you don't know if you can go up and down it. So the object is to open that up visually and physically so people can use it. Um, so what we've been working with is the architect from SEH. You can see the bottom left, the second from the left. There's a concept there for a sign to go up above on both ends of the alley. And you can see the doorway to the right where, I think that's Mike, standing there. It would be, um, there's that, this, this area. Will that be wheelchair? Is it steps? Yes, it can't be accessible. <coughs> Even if we did a ramp, it would not be, it we can't, can't be accessible. We can't make that elevation. It's too wide and it's too steep from one end to the other. Okay. So, um, this, this part, this, this little edge would probably be come up to here and open up. And it's, ma it's meant to mimic the windows that are like historically accurate down the street. Mm -hmm. So you kind of, it's like a metal piece, but it would be like mimic that historic feel and then have the logo on it. Um, the other thing we wanted to do is, outside of the area where this fire escape is, you could see that ugly ceiling up above you. We thought if you did something with um, conduit mm -hmm. between these, these posts, and then you could do some, like our, our river walk colors, like the banner type thing between them, you could run conduit down there, you could put the electrical in there, and then you could put lighting in there to go either up above those crisscross banner type things, mm -hmm. or you could do Christmas decorations along here, or it would be, you'd have the electric in here for future if you wanted to do something sculptural hanging from the roof. But it would kind of, if you did something like this, it wouldn't make it dark, but it would kind of cover up these ugly ceiling things. Oh, so is that a kind of rough enclosure then? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll keep the enclosure. Keep the snow. And these ends go exactly. away. You can see here how this is kind of open now. Um, all the door, the doorway would go away. I think everything up to the roof. So this would all be open both ends. But the nice part of it is what we're doing, if you walk in this alleyway, there's a French drain right here. So if you get water, rain coming in there, it can still drain, but it's covered. So in the winter time, it's not going to get so icy because if you take the roof off and you get snow in there, there's no sunshine in there. It's never going to melt and it would be a maintenance issue. But we want to open it up, you can see, because you're going to have less problems with vandalism and things like that in there, because people can see right through the whole thing. So that's kind of what we're talking about. How much of a drop is it in, in the end there in the elevation? Um, I'm trying to think. This is 896. I can't read that. Four inches. It's kind of six. I think it's I think, I think it's about eight to ten feet. Because I remember looking down here, if we had a step going up, it would be about an eight foot high. So there's no way you're gonna yeah. see the it's other still, end. It's gonna have be one big yeah. set of steps. It is like eight to ten. And just because of the rise and the run, it can't just be a easy slanted no. just because of ADA accessibility? From or just... here to here is more than 8% grade. Okay. So no matter what you do, you're not going to lessen mm -hmm. that. And we got to right? land that fire escape. Yeah. So if the, yeah. if the slant is there, the, this fire escape has been a challenge. Yeah. So if we put that fire, if that fire escape is in here and it drops, 
and we pitch this all the way, it might not work anymore. Okay. You know, because otherwise the river walks really only probably wheelchair accessible on the really really far ends, right? Well, it's accessible. I mean, you have to park at the bottom end to get to the bottom stuff. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Park down it's, there. It's it honestly only crossed my mind because I have a friend that's my age that is wheelchair bound, and we went to Okanog when they opened, and it was horrible. Yeah. Like to get because he had to get around the back, and we. I mean, it was. It just makes me think there's nowhere for somebody wheelchair accessible to get well, to that river walk other than far north and far south. Well, at, but. so if you park along here and along here, it's all these bridges. Okay, you have to, to come the, across. Right. I yeah. see. You just can't be that. Like that would actually be easier to gain access to the back side of the building. Yep. It'll be accessible from the parking lot. Right, the far north end yeah. or the right. far south end. But you can end, park yeah. across the street because it's been accessible from the east side okay. to the west side, both of those bridges. So they could access. Okay, so yeah, it would be. Sure they we agree. I mean, if we could make this yeah. ADA in, in a heartbeat, we would. Right. I mean, that's what we, you know. That's but the alley it won't work. Yeah. Okay. Because so. even the alley to the south, we're looking yeah. at redoing this one also. Right here, there's an alley. Yeah, that's the one I think that's we used Collins. by Collins Dive yep. Bar. Mm -hmm. and, that was pretty. That and, was the treacherous one we and used. And we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna shine it up and add some lights and things. But that also with that with the yep. different elevations, we can't make it. ADA. But you but have even if it's, to have you can't put steps in there because you have to be able to get vehicles. Because they still use Well, that's what I was gonna say. I mean, even if it was parking, parking. that's what we used <clears> to get in there. But it yeah, yeah, it's steep. But I mean, at least he's a young guy. It wasn't that yeah. big of a deal. But yeah. yeah. Just accessibility. It is. Okay. It is. It's a challenge because of the grades and yeah. Main Street so much higher than the Riverwalk. There's really you have limited ability to do it. That's what we did with. That's why we did what we did with Vest Pocket. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the switchback. So. Yeah. So, all right. Then Mike gets the next one. What's the next one? Oh, Carl Cuss. <laughs> Which is actually our next agenda. Mike, did right. you want to move on, or do you well, and is there any more discussion for Cindy before we end her portion of it? Okay, should be good. Okay, I think Mike's going to handle an update on Carl Quest renovation. I will do that, but first I want to just acknowledge Cindy's hard work and all the projects she just talked about. Um, COVID, no COVID, um, this lady is a true professional. She's like an engineer in her own office. She's an engineer, she's a grant writer, she's just talented in so many ways that, and she has a lot more patience than I ever will, um, which is important with these projects and working with contractors and things, but no, Cindy is um, definitely a um, superstar. Just very, very talented. It's an absolute pleasure. Okay, having no, her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no I, I just, you know, I just people need to understand. Right. You know, we have, you're a very talented <laughs> individual. You know, so, all right, Carl Cuts. Um, this is not a new drawing. This is, is an old drawing, but I wanted to have something for tonight. Um, I'm going to go back to 2018. Um, I think everyone probably remembers the city teamed up with the West Bend Baseball Association and the Cal Ripken Senior Foundation. And there's a lot of different rumors and stories out there, things like that, where Cal Ripken's given the city $500,000 and all that. And a lot of that was just not accurate information. The information, um, the accurate information was, or is, the city did sign an agreement with Cal Ripken Senior. Cal Ripken Senior Group is still, at this point in time, committed financially to the project. We're talking could be up around $150,000 at this point in time. That's just a verbal, but um, they're still involved. Um, we also worked at the Ripken Group and applied for a grant with Major League Baseball. Uh, Major League Baseball Foundations, they had two foundations that merged into one. That entire grant process went from like a three-month process to like a 14-month proce process. So a lot of that got strung out also. Um, we did apply, we, the city and the baseball association applied for that grant. We did not receive any of that funding. <clears throat> we were notified of that probably in March, April this year when COVID was really hitting. But as we know, we have a lot of outstanding individuals, foundations, and companies in West Bend, such as West Bend Mutual and their um, commitment of $500,000 towards this project and many other groups and service clubs that have committed money towards this. Um, the Baseball Association has asked me not to uh, discuss their financials at this point in time. It's, it's their business, not ours. Um, the grant money or the money has not come forward to us, things like that. But what I can tell you is they have definitely narrowed the gap on what, um, where their donations are and where the project might be going here. So 
We ask that the agenda get amended for tonight's meeting and have this a specific discussion item because on the 28th, I'm hoping that we can take something more formal to the Common Council. And I just wanted to make sure the Commission was aware of what was going on before they hear that it's going to Common Council. So we do have a new draw. We have new drawings, new specs for a new design. This right here is from uh, the Fields Company. They are out of Atlanta, Georgia. They work with the Cal Ripken Group on many of the fields that they do. This was our original plan. Um, yeah, here we go. This is kind of the new plan, new layout. Um, obviously, Silverbrook Drive is not going to go anywhere. B Diamond's going to stay. We've got the concession stand, tennis courts, things like that. So, and even a scoreboard out here um, is going to stay. That scoreboard is only a couple of years old. Can you, can you go back and forth again? Yep. Grandstand is going to stay. Grandstand will come down. I thought yeah. the diamond moved, but it didn't. No, no, no. Okay. Actually, it was shifted. It moves to the north, Mike. A little bit, but oh, okay. Yeah. So you just kind of look at here's a sidewalk along Silverbrook. You kind of look at that distance. And so you look at that distance, it does move in a little bit. Um, so right now, um, we are working with the baseball guys, baseball association, and we have been working with a company called. H and H Civil, they are out of Collins, Wisconsin, so just west of Manitowoc. And we are looking at possibly a hybrid field. So the full synthetic field, we if we would go with the fields company and the Cal Ripken group as this sits right here, we're talking something north of two million dollars for the field, the fence, no lights, no grandstand, just a field. Full synthetic field. So and again, the feet, or Cal Ripken Senior, they do fields all over the United States, but this is the company they work with, and with the original agreement, this is the company we were going to work with. Obviously, $2 million is pretty expensive. You start throwing in grandstand lights, concessions, building restrooms. Now we're talking about a $3 million field, and that's just not going to, that's not going to work. So that's why we did reach out and, um, um, <clears throat> to a local company, about and H and H Civil, they this is what they do. They build fields all over, all over Wisconsin, Midwest. Uh, as far as they've done some fields in Texas, they don't like to. It's too hot down there. They said, so um, we are looking at possibly. I'm hoping next week I'm going to be meeting with the baseball association and H and H and having everything kind of nailed down. Um, I just started going through all the numbers this week, so that's why I don't have anything specific for you folks yet, because some things still need to be discussed. But we're looking at possibly one or two phases for the project. Phase one, which would be right around 1.4 to 1.5 million, would be the hybrid field. So again, hybrid field would be your infield is synthetic turf, your outfield, and your surround is natural turf. Um, so phase one would be the hybrid field, fencing, dugouts, and the grandstand. No lights, no new concessions. We would keep the existing concessions, existing restrooms. So it'd be the new hybrid field, fencing, and dugouts. Not moving the lights? The lights would have to come down. The lights are done. Yeah. And then if we do receive additional funding, a phase three would be the lights, and maybe a phase three or four, or sorry, phase two would be the lights. And then maybe phase three would be new concessions and new restrooms. Going with that, does that limit your uh, utilization of that in the evening? It does. Um, but some fields in the area, like Kewaskum, just built their new field. They have no lights. They, they couldn't afford it. It's just, that's a reality. So you just readjust the schedule to start yeah. in the morning. Yeah. So um, we kind of felt seating would probably be more important than lights. Uh, you know, so... And again, this is all just, I received the information late last week. I just started going through it, so this is all still a little bit up in the air. But again, I just wanted to make sure the commission was aware that we are getting closer um, to maybe a decision for mm -hmm. this. And again, it's going to the Common Council on the 28th, so I just... You know, what, is the, what is it going to Council on the 28th for, then? If it, it just, Hopefully approval of the project. Just approve that yep. it can yep. move forward yep. and <clears throat> redo... The field. Yep, and um, Jay asked me, Jay Shambo, city administrator, asked that we bring it back to the Common Council because 
2018, the city went into the agreement with Cal Ripken, and there's been a lot of things happening and not happening. And many of the uh, council members are new that they probably have heard of the project, but maybe not understand what's going on. So at that point in time, I don't know if Jay is going to request that the council votes and approves it, or it's just an update to the council. I don't know yet at this point in time. So, uh, but it's definitely if we're if we're looking at the possibility of a hybrid field and all that. We're definitely getting closer financially. Yep. And then when you go to phase two, is that a provision for adding lighting? Then? Yeah, phase two would be the lighting. I think lighting's important, um, but I think seating, dugouts, playability. No, I approve that. We yeah. know the grandstands are just about. Yeah, shot. the grandstand is not yeah. in good shape. So, and then if this does go, <clears throat> we have to move a water. <clears throat> excuse me. Right now, there's a water main that runs through the field that would have to get moved. And all the demolition we would actually do in house. So we would raise the grandstand with park staff, fencing, lighting, all that stuff we would do. We probably have Mike come down and drop some of the light poles for us, something like that. <laughs> it's not going to affect Regner B at all. No. No, and that was one of the goals is I mean, we already lost A because of, um, I shouldn't say lost. You did lose it again. Lose it. We did. Yeah. I mean, the for sport courts, yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, so it's nice to keep that here, but also out here, all the electric is all sitting out here for a lot of this and that and the property so for us to start moving all of that that would be very difficult the uh, carl Cus scoreboard i mean that was a fifty-five thousand dollar donation like to preserve that i mean it's new you know let's continue so to push the field to the east probably wouldn't be real feasible and the tennis courts and all that we, they're not going to get moved either so right it'd be an expensive move so. well i'm glad to see it's moving forward again. Yeah. I really am. I think it'll it'll be work out well. I really do. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to see they went in phases, and that's what you got to do sometimes. Oh, yeah. I mean, it doesn't, yeah. you know. So no, I'm, and even the many of the baseball association folks they want a fully synthetic field, and I get that. You know, I do. It's yeah. but the reality is, if you don't have the funding for that. And they want to make sure they can play baseball. 75% yeah. of the game's on the infield, and if that's synthetic and we get rain, they can still play. Mm -hmm. We can still get our games in. And it, we do, we go with something like this, we're going to have more youth baseball on that field than we've ever had. Because mm -hmm. we'll, we'll be able to play those games. Yep. Get them in. It's all cool. So is this department going to have greater input into this than previously? Yes. Very much so. Mm -hmm. okay. Cool. Yes. And yes. Yeah, because nope. Nope, if, that, if that was to remain the same, I'd have a lot of reservations. No, it, so um, it's going to be the previous. The list of questions that I have sitting on my desk right now <laughs> for H&H and, &H and the baseball folk. And it's not, I'm not certainly not being critical. It's just we need to make sure we're getting all our ducks in, in, in order. And, um, that way, we, if we do bring something either back to this commission or to the council on, on the 28th, I mean, I need to be able to speak with confidence that this is, this is, these are the costs. This is what's going to happen. So, perfect. Any more questions for Mike at all? <clears throat> Thanks, Mike. Thank I you. I just like to say thank well, Mike for taking this. <laughs> 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 he's a turf guy, so it makes sense. Oh yeah. So he's like, I'm not touching this. <laughs> just give me the shelter and record. Okay. Wuss. Yeah. yeah, I have a wuss on this one. Thank you, Carolyn. <laughs> <laughs> All right, new business, donations, September 2020. We have one donation this evening for the Red Rocket Playground Climber. Uh, the Red Rocket was at Barton Elementary School, and this year it was removed and stored at, it was removed and stored prior to that new development up there. Um, at the same time, the Red Rocket was removed from Barton School. Um, the volunteers also removed the flagpole from Barton Park or from Barton School. And that flagpole is now resting at the Firefighters Memorial Bluff Park up, uh, up on North Main. So um, the volunteers were able to save two iconic pieces from that school. Um, the Red Rocket this spring, our park staff refurbished the rocket and it was installed across the river from Barton School and Barton Park. Uh, we would like to thank the Commonwealth companies, specifically Louis Lang for their donation. Additionally, we would also like to thank the Historic Barton Business Association for removing the rocket, also Verana Auto for storing the rocket, and the many other volunteers that were involved with the entire process. Uh, we have received many positive comments about saving this um, 
small piece of history from Barton, and um, I think it was, I think it's kind of a cool project to be able to pull something like that out, save it, restore it, and Why not? put it in uh, Barton Park for more generations to use. So that's what we have tonight for donations cool. to Red Rocket. I'll move to accept and acknowledge said donation. Okay, we have a motion. Second. We have a second. Any discussion? I'm going to abstain. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Okay. Motion carries. Right, three, two, right? Yes. Okay. Um, resolution authorizing the transfer of YERC funds for payment of expenses. <clears throat> Sounds good. Uh, the department is seeking approval to transfer 300, um, we had a little change, so it's $390.01 from the YARC account. This is for therapeutic recreation programs, specifically, you know, especially Olympics. Um, this fund is to cover their expenses for supplies and things of that nature. As of June 30th, 2020, there was $6,722 in that account. Um, so that is the request this evening is to transfer those funds, $390.01. Do we have a motion? Move move. Move. Second. 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 We have a motion. Second. Oh, I apologize. We have, <laughs> we have a motion to second. Any discussion on the $390? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. Okay, reports. Um, Chairman, I just have to say, um, I took a walk on Labor Day, Monday, and it was, and through Regna Park, and it was kind of a funky day. It wasn't real warm, and we should be dang proud of our system. Um, there were people on all the fishing decks, fishing as families. There were young people, women, men, girls, boys, playing basketball and volleyball. So then I crossed the bridge going across the creek. There was kids fishing in the creek, crawfishing, walking in the creek. And it was probably a 60 degree day. I walked by both um, apparatus playgrounds full. There was even kids in the splash pad. It was cold out, okay? It was still <laughs> open. And they were in the splash pad. They, well, yes. And besides that, the people walking and biking. So pat your guys on the shoulder sure. a little bit, okay? It was just wonderful to see. This was like 11 o'clock in the morning, to, you know, on a Labor Day to see all the people and families. I mean, all ages. It, it was outstanding. So thanks, guys, for all what you do. You okay? Really Thank appreciate you. it. So, uh, Mike Weston. I've been walking, but I also got my bicycle down, <laughs> and I took a ride out to Glacier Blue Hills, checked out those new berms and stuff. Mm -hmm. I stayed on the novice <laughs> ones, but they really did a nice job. And the, the place, I was just surprised. I mean, there wasn't a candy wrapper, all, my whole biking. I mean, it was, it was beautiful. Yeah. It's good to have partners out there to also help take great, care of it. That's a strong volunteer group yeah. out there. Cool. Yeah. And uh, another day then I went out to uh, Quas Creek with my bicycle, took the river walk all the way. I mean, it was beautiful trails. You know, that, that, that's the first time I've driven the bike all the way to Cross Creek. <laughs> cool. We have to nice. do it more often. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Cindy, are you done or you got I'm more done. for us? Come I'm on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mike Gantz, are you taking tourism, recreation, I'm conservation? I'm going to take H. Or? How about that? Okay, H. Director, Mike. I did email out <laughs> some, <laughs> some notes from some of the staff members. Yes, yeah. yes like we that. saw that. So, um, and I'm just going to touch on a couple of those. Uh, we have the Luminary Walkout at Lac Loran on October 17th. Um, again, with COVID, we will not have any activities in the building, so no hot chocolate, popcorn, and we will not have the bonfire at the end. So it's going to be a Luminary Walk. That way the volunteers are going to help us park the cars and direct people. They, they're not becoming or you know, getting in contact with people and all that. And We're even going to change. We're going to use the Winter Luminary Walk route around the pond down below. So basically everyone's going in one direction. They're coming out the other side. We should... We should be good to go that way. Also, Jackie is working on a Halloween pumpkin event downtown along Veterans Avenue. She's working with the Divas, the downtown business, and the uh, museum about getting something together down there. Again, a fall event, something we've never done, but um, with COVID, she's trying to get something together that, like a drive through something safe for the families to do. So that, um, that should be pretty exciting. Um, Park Rec Forestry, one little item. Um, the guys did start mowing road shoulders. Again, it sounds kind of weird. Why is the park staff out mowing road shoulders? We always have been. It was kind of a trade-off way back in the day before I ever started. Basically comes down to our department has the tractors. So 
Um, we have that equipment and we do the uh, road shoulder maintenance or mowing throughout the city. And um, normally takes one staff member about three to four weeks, you know, 40 plus hours a week to get that all done. So um, nothing too exciting, but it's definitely a safety issue and something mm -hmm. people normally don't think of when they think park, park park forestry. Does, uh, do you also do the Eisenbahn? The Eisenbahn is the counties. Okay. And we have been in contact with the counties several times this summer uh, and late summer. And they ensure us that they are putting a maintenance plan together to get some of the work done along that trail. So uh, next fall programming and court news really um, is off and running. Um, flight footballs, the numbers are up, things like that. So um, again, COVID or no COVID, people are excited about our rec programs. And Monday at Common Council, the Dogs and Parks Ordinance went before the council. It was a, um, your recommendation did not change. That went forward to the council. The council voted six to two in favor of that recommendation because it was not unanimous. It'll come back for a second reading then September 28th. So um, it's good. Megan um, spoke. She had some good details and things like that for it. Um, but it's good to see the commission's recommendation at council. So okay. that's what I have. Good. Uh, is there anything else tonight for the good of the Park and Rec Commission? If not, meeting's adjourned. Thank you. Thanks, Thank guys. You. Appreciate it.